On Monday, May 6, 2024, in Aransas Pass, Texas, attorney C.J. Grisham with his client Jason Followell gave a press conference outside of City Hall before the City Council meeting. I live streamed this press conference, but my video came out upside down, sideways, and it was garbage. I didn't like it, so I have fixed it and corrected it, and here is that press conference. Y'all enjoy it. When somebody like Jason takes a stand, you need a leader. Yeah. There are a lot of people who will follow, yeah. but they won't step out. They won't step out until you go in and take all the fire and provide that cover. Mm -hmm. And that's what Jason's doing. Yeah. And, and so more people now are starting to say, oh, okay, it's not just me. And when, when they see that it's not just them, they're more likely to stand up. And that's yeah. what happened today. I mean, you've got an entire community here yeah. with all kinds of issues that are finally feeling empowered to stand up against these tyrants. Yeah. That's that's what's important. So if you're out there, find that strong person, find that strong voice, get behind him or her and and make yourself known or make or you be that strong person because I guarantee you there's other people behind you that are waiting for somebody to take that first step. And once you take that first step in the snow, everybody else will walk in your footsteps. I am willing oh, yeah. to or fly us out there. We'll go talk for you. There you go. Press conference time. All right. I'd like to thank all the uh, the the regular establishment media for being here. Oh wait, so apparently uh, corruption at the uh, highest levels of a municipality is not important enough for uh, the media. We did send out an email to essentially all of the print and video journalists uh, in the area, and of course none of them are here. So the YouTube journalists are the ones that are getting this. Real news coverage. Well, the only ones that care. Yeah. So, I wanted to talk about a few things and bring up, um, but I think a lot of your audience already knows a lot of this, and uh, we're not going to be giving out anything that's necessarily groundbreaking. But we filed um, on behalf of uh, Mr. Jason Followell, who's next to me. And by the well, y'all know who I am, CJ Grisham. This is Jason Followell. Good to meet you, sir. <laughs> and I'm Mr. Falwell's attorney. So we filed a, uh, a civil action. The civil action is titled Jason Falwell, the, the uh, city of Aransas Pass at all. And if you want to look it up on PACER, the case number is 24-CV-00055. No audio. And it was filed in the Southern District of Texas uh, Corpus Christi Division. That's wrong. I guess I need to fix that. The Corpus Christi Division. And um, essentially, we're making several uh, allegations of fact here that, of course, we believe to be true and, in fact, are true. Um, and that is that the city of Aransas has passed through its various elected and ele elected and selected um, <laughs> elected and selected officials have conspired to violate the rights of Mr. Followell and others, uh, because since we filed this case, Others have come forward to uh, talk to me about not only being witnesses uh, to corruption and tyranny here in Aransas Pass, um, but also with their own cases. So uh, several things that we're alleging, of course, this all started simply, it all started very simply with Mr. Followell complaining about certain issues at City, City Hall. And as a result of him trying to expose some of these issues at City Hall, code enforcement, law enforcement, the fire department all started working together to try and find ways to shut Mr. Followell up. And they did that through code violations, through code enforcement um, and various other methods. Um, for example, conducting a wireless or a warrantless search of his property and obtaining um, a bogus warrant from a rubber stamping judge that did not contain any probable cause in it whatsoever to go into his building. The next allegation that we make, of course, are cease and desist letters. This is um, where the city attorney and the mayor ordered Mr. Followell to essentially stop talking about them. Uh, and stop talking about the fact that Mr. Followell was able to uncover a fabricated will that was signed by Carrie Scruggs. And so she attempted to silence Mr. Followell 
by getting the attorneys to send him cease and desist orders and threatening him with legal action, which is a direct violation of the Texas Citizens Participation Act. Then we've got the, uh, the city council meetings where the city council has decided that the only free speech that is authorized in Aransas past city hall is speech that Mayor Ram Gomez and city manager uh, Gary Edwards approve of. So if they don't approve of it, then they're going to consider it a personal affront or profanity. And those are two quotes because that's what they put in their so-called rules of the quorum. So, so on that defamation, they say it's illegal, but they let Chief Blanchard's mommy go up there and defame you in front of everybody. Right. It's only illegal if you go against them. That's correct. So we've got what's here. What we've got is discrimination. It's called content-based discrimination under the law. And uh, that's exactly what the city is engaged in. When Mr. Followell began to speak up even more loudly about what they were doing, the city actually issued a trespass against him for all city property. He was not allowed to go on any city property for no reason other than the fact that he was uh, engaged in constitutionally protected activities under the First Amendment of seeking redress for the grievances. Well, they didn't want me to go to the library to research the fight. And, and it did. It included the library. It included everything. Parks, uh, city hall itself, sidewalks, everything. Um, then there are a few other, of course, city council meetings in which uh, Mr. Followell engaged in the protected speech of uh, profanity, which is protected expressive speech. There are many instances of that in this lawsuit. And then uh, finally, once the lawsuit was filed, we had to amend the lawsuit. Because 10 days after we filed this and served the defendants in this case, which, by the way, the defendants are the city of Aransas Pass, Mayor Ram Gomez, city manager Gary Edwards, uh, city uh, councilwoman Carrie Scruggs, um, city fire chief Eric Kelly, uh, city police chief Eric Blanchard. Okay. And I think that's all of them, right? Yeah. That's, those are all the uh, defendants in this case. As of yet. As of yet. Um, and so after we had them served with their lawsuit, 10 days later, they came out and charged not only Mr. Followell with a Class A misdemeanor of hindering a government proceeding by disorderly conduct, but his attorney, <clears throat> me, uh, with the exact same uh, thing. Now, in, in my case, they charged me uh, the disorderly conduct uh, was reading case law. So the standard in Aransas Pass is that you cannot read the law to the city or they're going to break the law and charge you with breaking the law for retaliatory conduct. Um, so that's the issue here. Now, I haven't sued on my behalf. I'm only suing on Mr. Followell's behalf. But rest assured, I've got two years to file and I can wait. Uh, I want to make sure that Mr. Followell gets justice before I, I worry about myself. But they did also charge me with these same bogus retaliatory crimes, and they know that. So we've got several claims of relief. Relief, uh, freedom of speech under the First Amendment, unlawful or unreasonable search and seizure under the Fourth Amendment, equal protection under the law under the Fourteenth Amendment, retaliation and violation of uh, 42 U.S.C. 1983, defamation. Thanks, Mommy. Malicious prosecution, and then of course municipal liability. And again, all of this uh, can be found online. And we are be, we are seeking a five million dollar judgment because we've tried everything to avoid litigation. I tried emails. I tried coming to city council and educating them. And rather than just doing the right thing and stopping their illegal and unconstitutional conduct, they've doubled down on it. They've tried to silence Mr. Followell, and now they're trying. They've They've silenced or tried to silence Mr. Followell in the public square, and now they're trying to silence me as his attorney in the judicial square, in the courts. Because not only has the chief filed these bogus criminal charges against us, but the chief filed a false affidavit to the Texas State Bar against me trying to get me disbarred. Now, the state bar threw that what? case out. They threw out his complaint. It was dismissed. Um, but he did attempt to have me disbarred with a, a bogus, and believe me, it'll come out. It's going to come out, uh, complaint against me to the bar. So he's done everything he possibly can to shut up Mr. Followell to shut me up. But 
Mr. Followell's a fighter. I'm a fighter. And together we're a tag team. So uh, if there are any questions, I will, uh, from the from the crowd, I don't know, Harvey, you got anything? They'll pop up at the bottom if people are asking questions. They are. Uh, okay. I'm at Lever. Hey. Wait, don't read them out loud. You lab. covered everything pretty say. well, CJ. Okay. Anybody have any questions for CJ? Put them in the chat. So I got something for y'all guys. So well, and then not, I'll leave it for Jason if you got any comments. But yeah, I do have everybody wants to hear from you, Jason. So they, they tried silences, but they actually went after my job. They actually got me fired. I was a global eh and director. They got me fired for the criminal trespass of the whole town. And then they also sent them Chief Blanchard's personal YouTube page and his uh, YouTube APD page where he raided my gym. And they made me look like the bad guy, even though I won that case. Since then, they, I got a new job. I got hired almost a month ago, but they blocked me from getting a criminal background check and refused to give it to the company. I had to get another attorney who pro bono helped me out, and she's getting that fixed. And then they actually attacked one of my friends last year that worked here in town in one of these big businesses. Uh, Carrie Shrugs and Graham's sister-in-law went up to her business and tried to get her fired for speaking out against her. Now, since then, she's been promoted, so she is now uh, a big wig for the company. And she is coming today in about 30 minutes to actually read out what Carrie Shrugs and, and Ram Gomez's sister in law actually did to her and again i'm excited for her to be here so it's going to be a good count for me and uh i'll also add the city right now really needs to look into what is happening here those those people who are in positions that can make these change and i'm talking about the rest of the city council um need to understand that as it relates to mr followell the city has a zero batting average a zero batting average they have not, they've, they've thrown about 15 charges at him. He's beat all 15 of them. They've tried to bat. They've thrown one against me. That one was beat. So actually, I guess they're 0-16 now. And uh, they're about to be 0-18 once we get these two criminal charges dealt with. Yeah. But how can you continue to employ a police chief who is obviously filing retaliatory charges against people losing every single time and then still keep him employed knowing that he's going to cost you a lot of money. It, it, it can only happen if this is acceptable to the city and this is a part of their policies and procedures and practices and it's endorsed, which is why the city is named as a defendant in this case, because there's been absolutely zero discipline against the chief and zero discipline against the city manager for what they're doing. But I think that's also because the mayor who leads the city is also a part of the problem. But uh, other members of the city council can do a vote of no confidence. Um, they just won't because they approve of what's going on here. So that's where we stand. And uh, I look forward to speaking to city council here in about half half an hour. Yes, ma'am. Um, so we have someone who asked, what can people do to help you the most? Well, do you have a, do you have a fundraiser? We do have a fundraiser. I can put it in there. It's actually, it's actually in a bunch of my descriptions and in my community, but I'll, I'll add it to that link. And then, you have uh, people all over the world. You have people in Canada, people in Wisconsin. Yeah, it's getting bigger and bigger, which yeah. is good. So, but they also need to go stand up in their own towns and do the same thing. And we're Iowa. All be this. People are yeah. seeing this all over the world. Yeah, yeah. and and uh, I'm doing this at, at cost. I'm not, I'm not charging Mr. Followell for my time. It is a four hour one way trip to come down here. Um, so that means every time I come down here, it's an eight hours out of my day uh, to to defend this case. So obviously, if you want to kind of donate just to help with those expenses, uh, we'll put them both up. Yeah, I mean, I put them both up. Dollar sign CJ Here's Grisham. another one. Is there a backstory posted online for those new to see in the case? Yeah, so I, I think we kind of went over the backstory, but just really quickly, you. How did it start? What was the first thing that brought you to the city council's sure. attention? Sure. So they, they came on my property, went in behind one of my members and did an inspection on my property without my, without me being on site nor manager on site. Uh, and then I found out about it three hours later. So they broke into my property. And then when I called them on it, they said they do it to everybody in town. And I said, that's not right. Who's your boss? Is their boss, of course, is Chief Kelly, the uh, fire marshal. I uh, got a hold of him, emailed him, talked to him, and he said he is a patriot and for the Constitution. He'll get back to me in an hour with some discipline. 
And in one hour, he wrote me back and said, my department can do whatever they want, come on your property whenever they want to, because our charter and codes say so. And I wrote him back and said, codes do not trump constitution. Got mad at him, started going to council meetings, and I guess for about six weeks, it was really polite and nice, asking them to help me. And instead of helping me, they started taking away more rights. Uh, actually searched my property four more times, uh, two other times without a warrant. And then uh, you're only supposed to do an inspection every two years, by the way, guys. So they did it five times in three months and just kept bullying me and harassing me. And then somebody started criminally trespassing me because they got tired of me coming up here. And it's just been a roller coaster ride ever since. And that's the that's the true mark of a tyrant is when you're caught doing something wrong, instead of just admitting the mistake, you double down on it. That That is the, the definition of tyranny. And that's what happened with Mr. Followell. They made one mistake. They could have just apologized for it and moved on. But instead, they just kept going and going until they found something they could find. Yep. But unfortunately, they did it through illegal means. Yep. So that's the fruit of the poisonous tree. Can't use it. And here we are. And now, here we are. And I actually asked them every single council meeting for six weeks just to say sorry and I would go away. And not a single council member, fire marshal, fire department, police department ever told me they were sorry. I got a question. Yes. C CJ, is that common for the police and the police chief to team up with code enforcement to harass an individual that they don't like? It's common among tyrannical and corrupt governments. Yes. I've never seen the police intertwined with code. Believe it or not, like it's that. even happening uh, in my local town. I've really? got another case that's almost exact to what Mr. Followell is going through that I just had my first hearing on. Um, and we're going to beat, beat these charges. Of course, in their case, what's interesting is they've got these two charges that they're charging my client with, but instead of just settling for that every week, they keep citing him for the same thing, which is a building. And so every week he's got a new charge of the exact same issue. So by the time we finally went to court, we had 24 charges we had to defend against. It's really two charges, but they charged him 12 times. Damn. And the reasoning behind that, because and I would I would say my city is even worse than what what happened here is because they know that it's a court of non record at the municipal level. And in order to appeal, you have to pay twice the bond amount. Right. Well, he's up now to $17,000 in potential fines. And if he gets convicted of all of those, he's got to post a $34,000 bond instead of a $576 bond. And that's what they're doing up there. So, yes, it is typical in tyrannical and corrupt governments to use code enforcement, law enforcement, and the fire department to violate people's rights. Here is worse. Here, James Garner, the prosecutor for San Patricio County, the one I, that told me to break the law, and that's on audio on there too, and he didn't get in trouble. Anyway, side story. He told me I could be, I will be charged five hundred dollars per citation per day, and it was two years later before they got settled out. So mine would have cost hundreds of thousands of dollars, and they didn't care. Yeah. Now right, you got a question? Any more questions? No. Um, there is one guy that's on here who always says, "Ask." I don't know. Do you have a court date? Is it do you have a court date? Not yet. Not so the, where we are in the in the case right now is we're getting ready to move into discovery. Um, that's that's where we're at right now with uh, Mr. Followell's civil case. Uh, all the answers have been filed. Um, I'm looking at a, a potential response to those answers, and then a uh, and then possibly filing some affidavits so we can do a uh, motion for directed verdict and see if see where we go from there but uh, right now we're in discovery there you go all of his criminal charges except for the most recent one of hindering a government proceeding by disorderly conduct have all been adjudicated we beat them and we're going to beat these as well our ne my next my 16th case against me will be in june yeah and we've got a, right. i've already got motions filed to suppress the uh complaints on those cases as well so all right Anything else? If not, we'll go ahead and get ready for our city council meeting. Yeah, we'll see you all live in about 20 minutes.